I'm here with uh, Phil Howard and Richard Bianco at Strathbogie uh, Shark Council. We're just talking about digital readiness and the NBN um, and what's happening in, in this region and some of the issues, I guess, that are out there and some of the things that can, can be done. I guess first up, Phil, what does, um, what does the digital economy mean for, for this area, in your opinion? Is it an opportunity? What are the challenges? Yeah, well, thanks, Virgil, for the opportunity yeah. to actually speak about it. But, yeah, being a small rural council, um, we rely heavily on our kind of economic development initiatives for um, actually taking up the, the challenges of the digital economy. And certainly we have some larger players in our equine industry and our poultry industry, um, as well as our wineries, who want to make sure that um, we do have the infrastructure and the, um, the potential to use the MBN yep. and, um, and also the social media aspects of Twitter and Facebook. So we are developing a new website and that's yep. probably our first attempt um, into the new world to, to catch up. Great. As well as looking at some, some shared services options with neighbouring councils so we can share the cost and skill level. Tell us a little bit about the equine industry. You get, had an example there of um, uh, one of the studs or one of the um, farms, I don't know what, the, what to call them, but um, they're doing some innovative things in terms of um, video conferencing and collecting data from racetracks. Yeah, yeah we have um, Lindsay Park, which is the um, Hayes uh, group, who've moved up their stables from Adelaide to our shire, just outside of Euroa, yeah. um, and they're heavy, heavily reliant on um, uh, access to the digital world, um, and yeah. that's the way they've got specialist vets that need to contact, be contactable nationally and internationally, and as well as um, the way they test their horses out for their potentials, for their million dollar potentials, they yeah. need high tech equipment um, on their race tracks as well as in, internally training facilities. Great. Richard, we also talked a lot about collaboration and, and, and the importance of collaboration um, in terms of sharing resources and sharing skills. Mm. Tell us a little bit about that and um, your point of view on it. Sure, thanks Phil. Um, look, collaboration is very important. Um, in my area of business, business, I manage information services and I, I speak regularly with my colleagues in the sector in, in regional Victoria and, and Metro. and. Um, Whilst we currently verbally uh, meet and solve problems and collaborate that way, go back to our respective sites and implement benefits to the organisation, um, certainly, you know, I believe with with more, I suppose, politically will, political will and infrastructure, we can be actually sharing physically these these uh, these assets um, to then leverage more benefit, you know, internally in council and to the constituents. Um, yep. There's a number of examples that have been rolled out uh, regionally. That are, are clear wins. Um, look, you know, it, it may be a cop out to suggest that you know we're waiting NBN before we start all these things, but it's certainly going to be a cultural change to 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 give up the power we maybe have individually individually yep. in each council and to to share more. What kind of skills do you think are needed in the in the region to take advantage, and in council indeed to take advantage of of the NBN? Yeah, well, look, I'll speak from an IT perspective first, and yep. certainly I don't believe. I think IT is the start to facilitate the rest of the business to do what they need to do. What skills? Look, at the moment, regionally, in regional council, we, we do rely on external contractors and often from the metro areas. Um, that involves some travel, which, include, of course, you know, half a day is gone with travel, we pay costs and so forth. We're relying, well, for a couple of years, we've used products such as WebEx and so forth to, uh, to use remote cons or consultants to, to deliver benefits internally. Uh, what we hope with future collaboration, once we've got uniform systems, is to have create centres of excellence. So we'll, in the future, we won't have to outsource as much as we currently do. We can rely internally, and when I say internally, across clustered groups, um, have some more expect expertise to, to help each other out, whether they be technical problems or training, implementation problems or development of new solutions for internal councils yeah. and their constituents. Great. Over to you, Phil. So in terms of the um, local businesses, what do you perceive as some of the skill shortages and where do small businesses in particular need to, to build up their skill sets? Yeah, it's a good question, Fergal. Um, 
our main, what we're trying to look at is for some champions and some leaders within the business community so they can help our small businesses who do have gaps when it comes to being um, IT savvy, you know, they have issues, they might establish a website and then because of the skill set the website will collapse after a couple of years. Um, also the social media aspects of getting out to their clientele, um, really they probably need some of the the bigger developers or the bigger businesses that come into our town like the equine people and the wineries and um, some of our larger residential developers to help them um, uh, or partnership with them so they can capitalise on the um, our, um, social media opportunities as, as well as our, our business opportunities and yep. tourism etc. Great, well look I'll leave it on that, on that note, thanks very much and uh, we'll be in contact again I'm sure. Thanks, man. Thanks, man.